Playing World of Warcraft Classic on Hardcore mode is no joke. The game can be very unforgiving, and the smallest mistake can cost you your run. Many thousands of players have bitten the dust on their way to 60, and died in hilarious, cringy, and sometimes heartfelt ways. Are you interested in getting your character all the way to 60 without dying? Then you absolutely must watch this video, because I'll explain how to do it, and give you plenty of tips to make sure you have the best chance possible of making it. I follow the philosophy that, barring extraordinary circumstances and genetic anomalies, everything in my life is my own fault. The same thing applies to World of Warcraft Classic Hardcore. If you disconnect while underwater, or some griefer drops an infernal or teramus on your head, there's not much you can do about it, because that's an extraordinary circumstance, although you could take steps to mitigate this risk. This video will not help you get a clip on the funniest hardcore death moments on YouTube, I'll tell you exactly how you can make it to 60 in the safest way, not the flashiest or most exciting. Here are the 20 commandments of a successful classic hardcore challenge. Consider what it takes. Completing the World of Warcraft classic hardcore challenge is easy, but it's going to take a prolonged period of attentive gaming and, let's be real, at least a bit of luck. That's the first thing you have to take into account when attempting this. It's going to take a while. You cannot rush it. Because rushing it can and eventually will lead to fatal mistakes. Would you rather grind 50 extra mobs to avoid doing a dangerous quest? Or attempt a dangerous quest and risk dying and starting over? Many people would gamble with their one life, but the more boring yet safer way is to just grind it out and stay safe. Pay attention. World of Warcraft is a fun and addictive game, there's no denying it. But equally true is the fact that sometimes there are boring patches. Moving from one quest to another, grinding 90 trolls, collecting 20 pumpkins and so on. In these scenarios, it's easy to let your mind wander and participate in a secondary activity, such as watching a movie. Don't play on autopilot. Always pay attention because there's always something which could happen. Avoid auto-running while you're doing something else on your second screen. Pay attention to what you're doing and what's going on. Or you run the risk of running into stitches, random patrols, falling off a cliff and so on. Don't AFK. Sometimes nature calls or you need to BRB for a while. It's easy to just leave your character standing there, unguarded, thinking it'll be fine, but you never know what could happen. Just log out whenever you need to go AFK, no matter for how short a period. On a similar note, don't get distracted while in an active zone, messing around with add-ons and so on. Do that in a city or while flying or whatever. Don't engage in PvP. While it's still unclear whether or not PvP will be an option in Blizzard's official hardcore servers, that doesn't really matter. Even if it's possible, just don't do it. Tagging yourself for PvP opens you up to a random higher level griefer just ruining your run for the lols. If you really like PvPing, just wait until you're 60 or play another version of World of Warcraft. This also includes staying far away from the other faction settlements, Dying to a bunch of higher mobs clobbing you isn't anyone's idea of fun. No diving. Classic has a scattering of quests which require you to go underwater, killing nagas, picking up tablets or clams and so on, and this comes with multiple risks. Not only are you slower in the water and thus less capable of escaping mobs when things turn south, also at risk of dying due to drowning, the most ignoble death possible. Imagine making it to 59 and then dying because you drowned during a disconnect. Just don't do it. It's never required to complete underwater quests. Just go grind some mobs or do another quest instead. Stick to lower level content. Azeroth is a big place with thousands of mobs and quests, some of which are suitable for your level and plenty which are not. It's never a good idea to engage in combat with mobs which are higher level than you are. Your spells and melee attacks have a high chance of missing. You can get crit by the mob. Surrounding mobs probably have a wider aggro range, and so on. If it's red, you're dead. Mobs which are lower level than you, on the other hand, hit you for less, and you've got a much higher chance of absolutely destroying them without taking too much damage, lowering your downtime. Outleveling or outgearing the content you are doing will allow for a much smoother ride to 60. Basically, if a quest or mob is red or orange, or in most cases even yellow, stay far away and try to stick to green quests and mobs. Yes, you will get less experience from those, but you can kill them much faster, with less downtime and danger, so it evens out. No elites. On the same line as the previous tip, avoid elite quests like the plague. They're even worse than doing orange content and can get you killed in no time. Again, there's never any reason to engage in elite quests. 
You can just leave those and do some simple green quests elsewhere, or just grind. Even if we're allowed to group up on Hardcore Classic, I would still advise you not to do it. Things can go wrong fast when a group of elites kills your tank. Avoid caves and towers. If you've played a hardcore character before, you probably are aware of the saying, caves are graves. This of course refers to the fact that if you enter a cave in World of Warcraft Classic, you put yourself at significant risk, often lethal. The mobs can be closely packed and gang up on you, or they can respawn behind you and trap you inside. Many a player has died in a cave, so unless you noticeably outlevel the mobs inside, I would strongly suggest you avoid them. On a similar note, towers might possibly be even worse, because they're basically a vertical cave, with a higher chance to aggro multiple mobs at the same time, and escaping from it becomes fraught with danger because in classic, for whatever reason, mobs can hit you from above and below as well. Stay safe, stay away from caves and towers. Strafe, don't run. Getting dazed while trying to run away from a mob is probably the worst thing that can happen. You'll get hit in the back over and over, potentially getting dazed indefinitely and dying before you know it. For that reason, and for many others, it's a good idea to never turn your back to a mob, even if you want to run away. It's much better to strafe away, so you won't get dazed and can still parry, apply slowing effects and so on. Level your professions. Most hardcore players would recommend you level some professions and I can't disagree with them. Depending on how hardcore Blizzard is going to make their challenge, we might be restricted to only using gear we find and craft ourselves, and in that case, leveling a crafting profession for your gear type is very beneficial. Get a gathering profession which complements whichever crafting one you picked. Alternatively, Engineering is almost always a good idea for the bombs, target dummies, mind control cap, nets, and so on. Personally, I'd go with engineering and mining regardless of the class. In addition, leveling cooking and first aid is an absolute recommendation as well. Cooking grants you additional buffs to your stamina and spirit and so on, and every little bit of stamina helps and could mean the difference between surviving and dying. First aid is a no-brainer really especially for classes without a heal, such as rogues or warriors. Plan ahead. If you just go in and start winging it, doing whatever quest you find, you'll quickly run into the issue of having to do yellow or orange level quests, needing to go into caves or towers, and face many of the other perils we already talked about. You could avoid all of this by planning ahead. Which class and race are you going to pick, and which path will you take to 60? This will require either a lot of prior knowledge of the game, or diligent research, all of which you can get started with right now. Know your enemy. There are thousands of enemies scattered across Azeroth, and if you want to conquer them all, you have to start by knowing what they can do to you. Which mobs are dangerously strong with abilities such as fierce, knockbacks, stuns, poisons, diseases? Which run away at low HP to pull more friends? You have to be aware of this before starting combat. There's a weak aura called Classic Mob Abilities, which shows you this information. I would highly recommend getting it. Don't do dungeons. Yes, I know, dungeons are a lot of fun and can give you some great gear, but are also filled with elites which can quickly overwhelm you. They also take a lot of time, both to get there and to complete, and if your tank dies midway through and everyone scrambles for the exit, you've wasted a lot of your time. Beware your surroundings. Azeroth can be dangerous with random rares and elites walking around, patrols, or even just normal mobs respawning behind you. Before you engage in combat, Take the time to check your surroundings. Is this a spot where a patrol could pass by? Do you see dead mobs around which can respawn and catch you off guard? Are there invisible mobs around? Runners who can pull a whole pack on you? Also, is there a cliff nearby or an elevator or anything else you could potentially fall off and die? Best to stay far away then. By being aware of these things, you stand a much better chance of avoiding nasty surprises. Prepare for the worst. Never engage in a fight without having an emergency cooldown or escape route ready. Every class has some form of personal defensive cooldown. Big ones are Vanish, Neon Hands, Ice Block or Shield Wall, but smaller ones like Psychic Scream, Blink, Halfstone or Bark Skin are equally important. Make sure you've got whatever cooldown you need in case something unexpected happens. If you've recently used them, it's probably a good idea to wait a few minutes until they're back up before continuing. Just log out and check Wowhead for your next quest or whatever. In a similar vein, make sure you've got a clear path out of whatever zone you're in. That means you can run away without pulling additional mobs or respawns, which almost always will end up in your demise. Potions and Elixirs Potions can and will save your life, and you don't need to be an alchemist to attain them. 
They drop from plenty of mobs and there are many vendors which sell them. It's worth checking out vendors in your area every time you see one and if they sell potions to stock up. It's better to buy a few too many and not need them than pull an extra mob and not have a health potion ready. Elixirs can also be extremely useful, boosting your damage output or bolstering your defensive capabilities. If you can get them, use them. One item I definitely have to mention here is the Flask of Petrification, which turns you into stone for one minute making you immune to spells and physical attacks, but you cannot move or attack. This could save your life in certain scenarios, most commonly in dungeons where you can pop this flask, leave party, and get automatically teleported after one minute. Only learn skills you will need. If you've ever leveled a character in Classic, any version of it, you know that gold is a rare commodity, and getting it during leveling isn't easy. You rarely have enough gold to purchase your mount at level 40 if you just play through the game normally. In a hardcore challenge, I would absolutely recommend you get your mount as soon as possible, unless you're a druid or shaman, because the faster you can travel, the faster you'll level up, and the easier it is to get away from mobs you accidentally aggroed while traveling. This lack of gold is due in large part to the high cost of training your abilities. If you learn every possible skill every two levels, you'll be bankrupt before you know it, barely having any gold left for your repairs, potions, gear, and so on. The solution here is easy, only upgrade abilities which are vital. For example, as a mage, you don't need to learn higher ranks of Frost Nova because the 8 second root effect is the same at rank 1 as at rank 4. And there are plenty of abilities which you plainly don't need, such as Amplified Magic on a Mage, Hurricane for Druids, Sentry Totem for Shaman, and so on. Use your surroundings. Mobs in Classic, engaging scripted behavior, which you can soft exploit. Ledges, branches, and other objects often force mobs to run around while you can just hop over. Use this to your advantage, for example to recover some health, wait for a cooldown, let your pets or dots finish the mob and so on. There are also plenty of evade spots, certain locations where you can stand but where mobs cannot get to, causing them to evade and eventually reset. Keybinds. As any veteran player will tell you, clicking your spells and items is bad, okay? Especially in a hardcore challenge, it's of paramount importance you've got everything bound to a key and that you're familiar with this key. Defensive cooldowns and potions specifically, you don't want to be in a tight situation and have to search in your bags or on your bars to click something that can save your life. Be self-reliant. By this, I'm not just talking about crafting your own gear, but more about avoiding collaborations with other players such as not doing dungeons or elite quests or even normal quests with another person. Yes, I realize this is an MMO and interacting with other players can be a lot of fun and it can definitely help you accomplish things you cannot do alone. And that's assuming that it's actually possible to group up in the open world on the official hardcore servers, of course. The reason for this last tip is simple. Just like in real life, you cannot consistently rely on other people. Imagine grouping up with a few others to tackle a strong elite quest and then the healer suddenly disconnects during the fight, letting the tank die and you getting aggro and also dying. Whose fault is this? Yours, because you put yourself at risk, which is exactly what you should avoid during a hardcore run. If you can't do it alone, just don't do it. It's not worth the risk. I'll repeat, would you rather skip a dangerous quest and grind 50 mobs to make up for the experience in a safe way, or risk it and potentially die and have to start over? To me, the choice is obvious. In summation, all of these tips come down to three simple concepts. Prepare for the worst, don't take risks and be aware of what's going on or what could happen at all times. If you follow these guidelines, you stand an excellent chance of making it to level 60. It'll often be boring and it'll take a long time, but you will get there. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. I hope you learned something new. Did I forget to mention a vital tip? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching and see you in the next video.